Saving the world is all well and good, but sometimes you just need to wipe out the whole of Iceland. If you've ever wanted to span the globe and give as many people bubos as possible, then Plague Inc. could be the game for you. In Plague Inc., you and the vomit-inducing bacteria you call your friends will be competing to infect as many cities across the globe as possible, before coming so virulent that you'll eventually be able to wipe out entire populations. Think of it as a reverse pandemic. Plague Inc. is a relatively simple area control game. On your turn, you'll be spreading out and infecting nearby cities. Eventually, you may evolve your disease to be able to travel by air or across water, or to survive in harsh environments. We'll get to evolving your nasty little disease in a bit. Infecting cities and spreading your influence across the board is great, that's what scores your points. But if you end up with most of your tokens scattered across the board, it does hamstring your flexibility somewhat, and you won't be able to respond to other players' advances. It's a tricky little balancing act, and it does enable you to do something particularly horrible to other players, but we'll get to that later. One of the most interesting things about Plague Inc. is the traits mechanic. Now, on your turn, you'll be able to spend your DNA points, which are, incidentally, also what you need to win, to purchase some of these traits. On your player board, you'll have a number of slots for trait cards, and you'll want all of them. You'll want to increase your infectivity, which lets you place more tokens each turn. You'll want to increase your lethality to help you kill more effectively. But you also want to be heat resistant, cold resistant, and to be able to travel by sea and air. But you only have limited slots, and two of these slots contain useful abilities that you may have to cover up. One of these abilities just lets you just score an extra point, and the other one lets you move anywhere on the board, ignoring all the usual rules, which is really, really useful. But then you have to ask yourself, in order to win, when do you want to lose these abilities? It's an interesting question, an interesting decision. It's great. So you and your friends are happily spreading out across the globe like death-flavoured jam until one of you fills the last city slot in a country. Now, when this happens, the controlling player, whoever has the most tokens in there, has to roll the death dice. And if you roll equal to or under your lethality, that was a bit shit. Let's pretend I rolled a one, then you kill the country, which is brilliant. Seriously, you score as many points as there are cities on that card, and you get to keep that for bonus points later on. And speaking of countries, you'll be able to choose to place one of these countries on the board each turn. This, again, is important. Do you want to place a country that is easy pickings for you? Do you want to open up a new continent? Do you place hot or cold climate countries to shaft players who haven't evolved in that direction? There's lots to think about, and this deck of countries also acts as the game clock. When countries can no longer be placed, the game is over. Now earlier I mentioned doing horrible things with your disease tokens, you know, aside from killing millions of people. Anyway, let's look at purple here. They control Egypt, which has a port. Purple wants to keep Egypt around so they can spread out from there later on once they've secured the continent. So on your turn, you fill the last city slot with your token, meaning that on Purple's next turn, they have to roll the death dice and potentially kill off their only way out to infect the world. Who's a clever little bacteria? You are! Playing Plague Inc. isn't just a case of throwing tokens on the board, like I demonstrated earlier. Choosing where to advance to, which countries to place down, how to evolve and when to evolve, which cities to infect, when to go for the kill are all interesting and important decisions. And you have to balance planning ahead with also being flexible and reacting to what your opponents do. It's a very, very good accessible strategy game. And the accessibility is actually helped by your cheat sheet being on the side of the player board, showing you all of your available actions and how to do them. And to be honest with you, more games should do that. Admittedly, the theme and the sense of humour required to enjoy the theme may not be for everybody. It may be off-putting to some, especially some of the uh, humorous um, descriptions on the trait cards that you uh, evolve your disease with. <clears throat> pustules. Multiple raised pustules form, filled with the thick, opaque liquid that can transmit infection if burst. Delicious. Your mileage may vary. Now adding to the longevity of Plague Inc. are the optional rules, namely the event cards, which add a nice dollop of spice to the proceedings, giving you special abilities, a bit of a take that mechanic that some players may find interesting. But the main attraction here is the, if you flip over your player board, to the virus side. Now viruses play completely differently to bacteria. They have completely different special abilities and they evolve in different ways. They are rapidly 
constantly changing their traits and drastically change the way that you will play Plague Inc. Now, while Plague Inc. may not be as riotously fun as other area control games, such as Lords of Vegas, it does scratch a very different itch. Plague Inc. isn't amazing, but what it does, it does very well, and it is a lot of fun. And I do recommend that you check it out. If you like this video, please do share it with your friends, don't let Dysard be your little secret. If you'd like to support the channel financially, like the fantastic people on screen now, there is a link to my Patreon page, as well as links to my most recent video and social media so you can stalk me on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.